Okay, a lot of you guys have been wondering, where have you been? I've had tons of messages. People are asking if I'm all right, and I, I apologize for just disappearing. No, actually, I don't. Never mind. I don't. I don't apologize. But you know, I stopped doing videos to catch up with some orders, and then I just found it so nice to actually just work. It's windy outside. But it is so nice to just be productive and work and not have to film that I just kind of kept it going for a little bit. I kept on riding the wave and I'm like, every time I'd come out here I had intentions to film something. I'm like, you know what, I just want to get this done. I just want to do it. And so, it's one of these things. Anyways, we're going to get back into doing some videos now. I'm, I'm not sure about the daily vlogging thing. I kind of get bored of it. I, I, I enjoy it, but it's kind of boring to just film every single day uh, and it's also a lot of work but uh, anyways what we're gonna do today is we're gonna start a new knife build start to finish now this was a knife that I actually made for my wife for her birthday and it is a really nice it's kind of based on my bushcrafter knife that same kind of size but it's a it's a little bit smaller we're going to be using nitro V I do believe so anyways let's just start making a knife Alright, so after we've got our profiling done, I'm just gonna hit it with a little sandpaper, just kinda clean it up a bit. Can you hear the wind out there? <laughs> it's so windy today. Alright, just got back from lunch and uh, what I'm going to do now is that because of the shape of this blade with this little part sticking out right here, I wasn't able to put this flat onto my belt grinder and kind of shape it like that. So I've got all the grind lines going perpendicular to the blade right now and I don't like that. I want them to be all parallel. So I'm just going to put this in the, in the vise and then we will draw file it so I can get a nice smooth surface so we can mark out our grind lines. And then for this one I actually do believe that I'm going to grind it before I heat treat it. 
In the past with Nitro V, I've always heat treated it first and then ground it, just being really, really careful to keep it cool. But this time I want to try, I mean, Nitro V for me, it's just, it's like the warping steel of doom. I can't, it seems I can't heat treat it without getting some crazy warpage in it. I mean, I can always fix it. We kind of bring it back, but it's such a pain in the butt to deal with. So if it's going to warp anyways, I may as well have some grinds on there. We're going to have to straighten it out anyways. So I think that's what we're going to do. But like I said, I'm going to get this cleaned up. I'm going to hit with a draw file and then uh, we'll also get our holes drilled and pick out what scale material we can use for this. pretty good pretty much ready to go uh, I also did a little grinding on a sliver this one has been heat treated so I got to take this down I'm gonna switch to a finer grit belt now uh, but the grinds are going good on this one some nice smooth pretty difficult freehand grinds there but happy with how they're turning out I love these little knives call it the sliver for good reason uh, what I think I'm gonna do now actually is because we don't have time to get the heat treat done on these bad boys Here's a couple of come out of heat treat today, this morning. Didn't film that. Here we got this one ground out too. Rough grinds looking pretty good. What I'm gonna do now is a knife that I had started, if I can find it. A knife I'd started quite a while ago and I'd wanted to do it as a one day build. Ah, there it is. But I had some issues with warpage and this again is uh, Nitro V. This one's been heat treated, tempered, it's all ready to go. And uh, this has no grinding on it whatsoever. I had a little warpage in this blade, so I've straightened it out. And the way that I straightened it out is really high tech. Basically, I'll kind of look down, down the blade, wherever I think there's a, a bend or a warp, I'll stick it in here and I'll just yank on it and just wow, wow, wow. It works really good, actually. It's kind, of a, it's kind of an old school way to do it, but I've got this thing really nice and straight. Uh, and then also, it's also a good way, I guess, to check your temper. Like, this is really, really hard. My file does not cut into this very well right now. Um, but I can really bend it. It's got a lot of flex in it. So uh, it's actually pretty cool to see that uh, even a hardened heat-treated blade like this isn't too brittle. Uh, definitely bent it way more than this thing would ever get bent in its normal life cycle. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to grind this one. And the way that we grind uh, a knife like this is quite different. And actually, I learned this technique from Mike with Ecom Knives. Uh, this is the first time I ever saw it done. It works really awesome. And uh, anyway, so let's go ahead and scribe out our lines and then I'll show you a little bit of a secret. All right, so I've got my line scratched in there and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grind a hard 45 on here. Uh, actually, let me just set this up and I'll, I'll, I'll explain it at the grinder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and grind pretty much a 45, come at the, like this, bring my edge thickness down right away along the entire thing. And then what I'll do is I'll be blending it from there. And what I saw Mike do, and this is a brilliant idea, this is not gonna have any plunge line, so it's gonna be a smooth transition. Essentially our scales are gonna be like this, right? Scales are gonna be something like that. And so we need this area to be completely flat. So what Mike showed in his video is you kinda take a Sharpie, you kinda just scratch a line, we'll maybe go something like this. And this is an area, I basically want my bevel to follow this line here. I don't really want to have any hard lines for my bevels. Um, so I want to stay above this area. So if you just kind of mark yourself some, just, and this is just for a guide, just a reference. Um, get this cleaned up. 
So we're just kind of putting a guide on and I don't want to grind into this area at all. And that will leave me with a nice flat spot for my scales to glue up to. Now hopefully the video might show it a bit, but I'll come in here and I'll put a hard 45 on like this. And then I'm literally, I'll take my, my work rest off because I don't want that. It's just gonna be in the way. And then it's a matter of like blending by hand. This right here is an 80 grit ceramic bell. This is actually a really, really fun grind. It seems like it would be really difficult, but it's surprisingly not. Um, I don't know, because there's so much area there, and I'm not going really aggressive on my belt. I mean, 80 is plenty aggressive to remove the material, but it's not going to do anything super fast that I won't catch any mistakes if I'm in the middle of making them. So there's actually a really, really handy way to do it. So, uh, you know what, enough talk. I'm just going to set this up, and hopefully the video might show you how, kind of how you go about doing this. Here's our rough grinds done. And uh, I'm not sure how well it showed up, but you can see by the grind lines, the way I did most of this was actually at an angle. And that way we can use a larger area um, for longer blades. If you can kind of kick it back like this, it gives you more distance to work off of and it kind of keeps your grinds flatter. These ones turn out pretty good. They're not perfect by any stretch, but I think I'm gonna start my hand sanding. Now I've got them roughly where I want them to be. I'm just gonna kind of gently blend this in. And then I got a little more work on blending this side here. But as far as the edge thickness and the geometry, I mean, it's nice straight lines, same thickness all the way down. It's actually a lot of fun to work with large bevels like this. I don't know, kind of holding it and you, you just notice it getting lighter and lighter as you're working. It is a lot of fun. I really, I'm like, wow, why don't I do any bigger knives like this? Because freehand grinding this, oh my goodness, it is such a blast. There's a big old fire outside now. It's gonna get super, super wind noisy, so I'll talk about it first, but this is this is crazy. Like, stuff is blowing around. Uh, they say like 100 kilometer, 130 kilometer an hour winds, which is like 70, 75 miles an hour, but just check out this fire over here. Oh, that's bad news right there. That's a big old fire. Just gonna keep an eye on that fire and gonna start some hand sanding. All right, so that, that hand sanding was proving to be too much work. And what I did is I put a contact wheel with a Trizac belt on my belt grinder. And I was actually able to get a really nice finish and blend everything uh, using a contact wheel like this. So I haven't done this side yet. We'll go ahead and do this side. And uh, I'm actually quite impressed. I've never actually used my contact wheel like this before, but it worked pretty good.
All right, so we did the little cheater trick there on the contact wheel, kind of getting it looking like it was a hand finished blade. And then I've just gone over this quickly with, I think I went up to 400 grit on here. And you can kind of see this plunge line that we're talking about. It's, it's very, very, we kind of blended it in. I'm not entirely done yet. We still have a little bit more to do, but that blade is turning out fairly well. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do is I'll probably take this up to, I don't know, four or 600 grit. Um, hopefully we'll spend some time tomorrow, another couple hours hand sanding. And then for scales, I've actually had these made up a while ago. Uh, this is a black canvas micarta and there's like this red micarta. It's like an old vintage micarta. And then uh, I've got a white little spacer in here and then white liner. So I've got both of these. Hopefully we can kind of get these shaped up and fit on here tomorrow. As well as tomorrow, I'd like to get these little knives heat treated. Got a bunch of these. Again, these are Nitro V. This is Nitro V. Really like the Nitro V. So we'll keep plugging away at it. I'm going to try and get back and do more regular videos. It's been like, what, two weeks or something since I've uploaded a video and it's pretty pathetic. Uh, but man, it's just been so nice to just work without filming, but we'll try and get more videos coming out for you guys. And also a quick update on the steel from Alec. Now he had sent it to me and September 18th, I got a phone call from the shipping company. I believe it was September 18th. And they said, okay, we need to pay the customs on it. It was like 30 bucks. I'm like, okay, sure. She's like, okay, I'll email you the invoice. And I never heard of it after that. And that, that was it. And I'm like, well, what's going on? And so finally she called me on Monday and said, hey, I've got this thing. Why haven't you paid your invoice? And I said, I didn't get an invoice. Incidentally, she had the wrong, she, she mixed up a letter in my email address, so I didn't get the invoice. Anyways, as I was talking on the phone, I paid for that. So that steel, the Damascus from Alec, should be here. She told me it'd be here, that was on Friday I talked to her. She told me it should be here by Monday. It wasn't here yet. Uh, today's actually Tuesday, but I'm thinking it should be here this week, so that'll be exciting. We can get going on that project as well. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please consider doing so. Click this little circle right here, and that will subscribe you. And then there's a couple other videos or playlists here that you might enjoy. Uh, thanks so much for watching, guys. Cheers.